Welcome everybody. Today um, I thought I'd demonstrate my latest um, uh, tech demo, if you like, of uh, sprite multiplexing on the, on the Mega Drive. Um, the Sega Mega Drive was, you know, limited to 80 sprites on screen at a time um, without trickery and uh, it was also limited to 61 colours on screen. Uh, there were some ways you could um, get more colors on screen and uh, one of these ways was using the uh, horizontal interrupt to basically redraw sprites um, you know ahead of the raster beam as the, as the raster was drawing the screen you'd uh, stop the raster and uh, redraw the sprites below the raster and uh, basically you'd, you'd rinse and repeat this many many times on the screen to get more sprites um, you know back in the days of the C64 it only had eight hardware sprites and um, this was quite a common technique to get more sprites on the 8-bit systems we didn't typically see multiplexing very often on the Sega Mega Drive because you know 80 sprites is quite a lot um, particularly if they're the largest size being 32 by 32 pixels that's more than enough to cover the whole screen but there are a few use cases where having you know more sprites is handy um, so I just wondered how far I could push this technique and um, I think I can get a bit more out of it yet but currently we're at 440 sprites um, and the other bit of uh, the other technique that I've managed to get working is I've managed to get each sprite being a different colour. So we've got 440 sprites and 440 colours on screen. So what is you know what are we actually looking at here? So on the left hand side we've got Blastem. Um, that's the emulator I mainly use for development. And on the right hand side here we've got the Gens emulator. And the reason I'm running both emulators is both of them have different strengths and debugging. Um, Blastem is the more accurate emulator, so I tend to rely on that more, but it also has an excellent uh, CRAM debugger screen. Now this screen shows us what colors are allocated to the palette on every single line of the screen. So uh, for example, you know we can see quite early on in the raster that uh, some of the sprites have been you know been allocated to palette one and they're changing through different colors you see this big black bar it's a big black bar sort of about 16 colors along that's basically the transparency color um, so what Blastem is showing us here is that on different lines we're allocating different colors to the sprites and you'll see they all trend downwards in a slight uh, angle down. So you know it looks like the colouring's taking place over three or four lines, and that's because we've got a limitation where we can only draw three colours per line, uh, as we have to do it very quickly, right in the hidden area of the screen, basically in the border, um, and hence we can only change so many colours per line. And if we tried to push beyond this, we would get um, CRAM artifacts. There are, there are some other techniques we can do to change more colors per line and I'll be trying those in the next video but for now um, this video, this demo works with three colors per line and we have a ton of changes that we do um, to get the 440 colors on screen um, and as you can see a lot of the palettes actually not used at all um, you know there's basically 20 colors here that are changed quite often I think there's about 22 times they're changed and um, and that gives us our 440 colors now um, so, so that's the Blastem side of things now if we come over to the Gen side of things what I wanted to show over here was the sprites debugging panel now um, with multiplexing you're basically reusing the same sprites over and over again and I could have used all 80 sprites and redrawn you know 80 again and 80 again and 80 again but it, it really didn't make any difference whether I did 80 you know times 
whatever it is, six or something like that, to get to the 440 or you know whether I repeat 20 more often. So that's what I went with in the end. I, I did 20 sprites 22 times redrawn. And that simplified my code a little bit. And so what I wanted to show you here is that basically um, you can see that the first 20 sprites they're getting redrawn rapidly. You see the expositions are all changing quite frequently, quite quickly. Um, the Y positions, um, they are changing, but it's just not updating them. Um, it's probably only updating this panel once per line. And so what you're probably seeing is um, the expositions changing per frame. I can assure you the Y positions are changing, um, but it's too quick for gens to pick up, but you can see we're only using about 25% of the Mega Drive's 80 sprites, which is 20 of them. The rest are, we haven't used. So, um, so yeah, it, it, it's basically we fight a couple of things with this demo. One is the redraw time of the sprites. Um, the more things we change in the sprite, like if we change its X, Y position and its tile, then so to say animate it, then that will take longer than just changing its X and Y position. And there's also things like um, the VDP can't quite keep up with the 68K um, changing, you know, sending it so much data while it's trying to draw the screen. So we've also got a bit of delay there too. Uh, so. So my goal is to actually get more than this, more sprites than this on screen, and I'm going to try to get more colors on screen as well. Uh, we've got a 511, 512 color palette, and I'm hoping to get uh, all of those colors on screen. And I've got an idea to actually create some colors beyond that. So hopefully we will, uh, you know, I'll be successful with that with another video in the in the near future. But. Um, yeah, so that'll sort of wrap this one up. If there's any questions, please put them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them for you. And um, yeah, thanks for watching.